your heart was so big, Ron. Wow. Well, it's thanks to Marissa. And Marissa, you see, I took your advice and I put a pen behind it. So yeah, I it's so much easier, right? And you're I right. I didn't it. believe it. And now I'm like, oh, dad, you, you were right all along. You know? It's a lot of fun. Okay, so it says we are live on Facebook. Uh, I haven't received the notification yet that we are. But as soon as I get the notification, I will go and head and share the uh, share the event. If someone would be so kind as to drop the Zoom link in the live feed at some point um, this afternoon so that if the people are watching live on Facebook that they can pop in the lovely Zoom room or comfy Zoom room as David Leo Sara says. Okay. So welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Red or Green Books, the winter book release. I am so, so excited for this Meet the Poets. Um, I am your host and your publisher, Marissa Prada. I am a poet, spoken word artist, uh, author, mother, <laughs> here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. If you're wondering what's hanging behind me, those are uh, chili ristros, those are red chilies, hence red or green books. Uh, red is R-E-A-D, -D, uh, because red and green chili is life in New Mexico. So um, that is the homage to where I'm from. Awesome, so Shane is coming back in the room. Uh, just to let you know, a quick announcement. Next Saturday, we have the actual book signing for these summer poets, the original 10 here at Red or Green Books. And I'm gonna give them a quick shout out as we get started today, because really the original 10 who launched um, with this press are, are very talented poets. And if you're not familiar with Red or Green Books, you'll have an idea of what you can expect from the winter poets that we're going to meet today. So we have, and this is in no particular, order. We have uh, Guanaco Binge by Matthew Marikin. Also, the cover art on these books, with, uh, with, uh, with the exception of Fresh Linen's book, all of the cover art is done by Shane Maynard with Guerrilla Poets, and we'll talk a little bit about Shane later. Uh, Before the Streetlights Come On, this is Fresh Linen's book. You have Swallow My Sparrow, and I do apologize for the green screen. It does kind of capture the uh, whites and wash them out, but there's Swallow My Sparrow, and this is a po book of poetry by Sarah Bella Mental. My book is Conversations with Grief. We have Inspired by Actual Events by Kimberly Shaw. We have Calamity by Elemental. There is Sing Home Back to Me. This is by Elaine Hill. My Abyss is by Poet Con Raspaya. We have Belly of the Snake. This is by Denise Science. We have Epiphanies of the Soul. This is by Ma Dukes. So those are the original 10 poets. Those books are available to purchase uh, individually from the poets, as well as if you would like the entire collection, the entire collection is available online. Uh, so that is super, super easy. All right. So um, a lot of people ask me, like, how the heck did we start? Red or green books, like where do we get the idea? So Ma Duke, Sarah Bella Mental and I were sitting around together and we were saying, well, we should maybe pool our resources and publish our books together. We were really tired of not having enough opportunities for publication and we didn't want to uh, be ripped off for our collection of poetry basically. And we didn't want to lose control of the vision of what we wanted our books to look like. So the three of us kind of going in together to publish turned into, well, we should just publish with a wave of other poets. And that became an idea of actually making this into a business and to actually launch a press and then the original 10 came and then the ideas came to publish 10 more and then 10 more and then so the idea is going to be all of these poets it's their debut collections they've never published books of poetry before we want to bring opportunity to the front lines for a lot of authors uh, i'm very excited that we're a female forward press it doesn't mean that we don't publish men it doesn't mean that we don't love men but we just really want to support uh, from the female point of view i'm excited that seven out of the ten of the original ten are women more than half are people of color and in this winter launch again seven out of the ten are women that is honestly just how the numbers worked out it was not an intentional thing but that's just how it worked out here at the press and so our ten poets that we're going to be introducing you today to uh, we have Ashley Edwards Emily Cortez generally Simo Brian Franco we have Gigi Miro Nick Paleologos Pam Rice Roz Diaz 
Tori Lutz and Wordsmith Philly. And I just do it in alphabetical order. So don't think that like, you know, I said someone's name before someone else's name. I usually just try to go in some sort of an order uh, for that. All right, I'm looking on my Facebook. I don't see yet that we're live, but um, it could be just because I don't have my profile uh, set up correctly. So if, if y'all see the live Facebook page, um, if you could share it, that would be great. Cause I know there are not as many people on the red or green books uh, profile as there are say um, with uh, uh, the word is right or on, on our own personal platforms. So that would be nice if there's a way to, uh, to do that. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't see us live, but it says we're live. So y'all might be able to do that since um, you don't have, um, since you don't have um, red or green books as your uh, profile. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna take about, um, yes, I know, I, I do see the live. I just can't find it. Um, I can't find it in my notifications to share. Um, we're gonna go in this order. We've got Ashley, Nick, Emily, Miro, and Generalissimo, and then we will bring up uh, Shane Maynard, if she's available to talk a little bit about Gorilla Poet, she's going to be contracted on most of the covers for this launch. And then uh, the the last wave today will be Gigi, Tori, Wordsmith, uh, Philly, and Pam. And we will um, we'll go in that order today. If someone you're waiting to hear from is going to be popping up, there you go. Um, let me pull. I had this all ready to go, and then it all closed back down on me. Um, the, the poets will have about 10 minutes. They can take up to 10 minutes. I'm not going to mute you guys. If you go over, that's totally fine. Uh, just be cognizant. Some of the poets here do have to get out of here today. And I don't expect this to go all, all, all night. Okay. We're just going to, um, give your bio, talk about your book, how you got there, and then, um, read, a, a, an excerpt, a poem or two from, from your current, uh, the, the book you're gonna be debuting. I do not have all the titles in front of me, so please introduce the title of your book as well, because yeah, I don't. All right, Miss Ashley, are you ready? Okay, so <laughs> Ashley is a poet and spoken word artist originally born in Pittsburgh, but calls herself a Richmond native. She, uh, she first started writing after the passing of her mother in order to express herself creatively. She hopes to heal with her poetry and inspire others to get creative and tell their story. Her topics range from domestic violence, love and relationships, suicide and self-love. Please welcome up to the mic, Ashley Edwards! <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Um, so I'm Ashley. Um, I have been writing poetry probably for about 10 plus years now. Um, I started when I was like in my teenage years. So like around 16, I think is when I kind of first started it out. Um, and I just realized I was actually really good at it. Um, and writing is just something that I enjoy doing. Um, I think it's a great way to kind of just express myself and heal my own demons that I deal with. Um, so I, uh, the title of my book is called It Was Sweet Before It Was Sour. Um, and basically my book has two parts to it. So there's a sour side and a sweet side. Um, so obviously the sweet side has more of like the happy and love stuff. And then um, the sour side deals with a little bit more harsher topics. Um, but I'm super excited for this opportunity. Uh, Marissa is absolutely awesome. And it's really weird how we met because we met at this open mic. And it's funny because I was totally against going to this open mic. I was just like, I had just moved into my new house and I was just like so exhausted. And I didn't want to go, but I was like, no, let me go. And that's how I met her. So it was kind of like almost destiny a little bit. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to be reading two poems, um, one from the sweet side and then one from the sour side. I gotta give y'all a little bit of both. Um, they are a little bit shorter poems though. I'm definitely not gonna take up like 10 minutes of y'all's time, but they're a little bit shorter poems uh, cause I feel like I kinda, I like to perform and have like my little like spoken word pieces. And then I kind of have like my poems like for books where I like to kind of, I feel like they're a little bit easier to read. So I'm gonna start with the sweet side and then we'll move into the sour side. Here we go. 
This body is the only thing I got. Let me take pictures with it. Let me whisper sweet nothings to it. Let me show off these tattoos on it for they are our battle scars. Let me put it in a bikini. Let me make it my woman crush Wednesday. Let me let it wear a crop top. Let me take it on a date. Let it order the most expensive bottle of wine. Let me be drunk in love with my body. Let me tell it to say thank you when people compliment it. Let me bring it out the dark. It looks better when the light hits it. Let me water it. Let me have it say no when a man says yes. Let me sleep naked with it. Let me put it on a scale from one to 10 and watch it score an 11. Let me walk into a room with it and wear it like the moon wears a smile at night. Let me have it in the tightest dress, stomach poking out just as much as this booty do and let me dance, God damn it. Let it have confidence. Let it stop thinking it's gotta look like a size four. Let it wear these size 16 jeans and feel sexy when Cash Money Records takes over for the 99s and 2000s. Let me stop weighing it. Let me stop defining its worth by the amount of pounds it is. Let me start telling it she's beautiful. Let me stop comparing it. Let me remind it that it's worthy. Let me tell it to not be ashamed. Let me tell it to stop apologizing. Let me find peace with it. Let me remind it to be happy, even on days when every scar, every stretch mark, every magazine tells it not to be. Let me take care of it the way a mother protects its child. But most importantly, let me love it unconditionally. So that is a little poem from the sweet side um so let thank you all for the i like see the comments popping up i haven't seen what they said but thank you guys comments have been popping up like crazy so i appreciate the love um okay so now i'm going to read a poem from the sour side no one is prepared for days like these when my anxiety wants to be the loudest friend in the group. I'm learning that alcohol is the peanut butter to my anxiety and jelly sandwich. That on days like this, when my anxiety wants to be the one, only one on the dance floor and I don't even have control over the footwork, everyone just watches, no one steps in. And maybe they don't know the choreography, but damn it, I just wish someone with a little rhythm right now would try and save me. I mean, dance with me. I mean, save me, please. Anxiety is like watching yourself from behind a bulletproof mirror and you are the gun. It's like trying to put a fire out with another small fire or it can be the smallest scratch on the coffee table, the one you don't see all the time, but you know it's there that the coffee table is no longer perfect, that you are no longer perfect. Anxiety has scraped your knees and elbows. No, fuck that. Anxiety has taken a baseball bat to your whole entire body. Your lungs are quicksand. Your hands are razors. Your feet are useless. Your mouth rummages for any sound to form help. Did I forget to mention that anxiety has a funny way of staying silent? And uh, those are my poems. <laughs> Yo, yes. Tell people where they can find you. Where, where can they get uh, a hold of you online and start following you? Yeah, so um, social media, um, I have Facebook, which you can just find me as Ashley Edwards. Um, that's it. I don't have anything special in my name or anything like that. Um, I'm probably more active with my poetry on my Instagram, though. I do post it on Facebook, but Instagram is kind of where I be at. Um, my Instagram is underscore and then it's melange, which is M-I-L- a-N-G-E, so underscore melange. And that's probably where you'll catch most of my poetry at. It's on my Instagram. Awesome. Yeah, I, we were at the Virginia Slam 
And I was I, like, I tried to go to lots of different venues and places uh, online. And I remember seeing Ashley and I, I was like, man, she's got to come feature it where it is. Right. <laughs> right. But then she had said that she had never published a book. And I was like, well, hold on. Do you want to publish a book? Right. Because I, I was looking for more first time poets, but who are incredible. And she's absolutely phenomenal. Y'all, this is just a taste, right? Today is just a taste. <laughs> of the 10 that are coming this winter. So please get on their socials. Um, all of their information is also on the website, redorgreenbooks.com, red, R-E-A-D, redorgreenbooks.com. You can read their bios, all their social medias and cash handles are on there. Ma Dukes is in the house. We got Roz is in the house now. Yes, welcome Roz. Karen Scott is here. Nathaniel Beck is in the house. Poet Khan, Ross Faya, some of the original 10 are in here as well. Welcome, Angelica. Kev, who's just coming in the room now. Uh, we're very excited uh, to have so much love and support around this community. All right. Speaking of someone who pours love and support into the community is our very favorite host with the most, Nick Paleo Logos. Uh, when I first went to New Yo to do the open mic, uh, Nick immediately dropped in the chat, welcome Marissa, welcome Marissa. He was so welcoming. And when I read my first poem, I was very nervous because this was at the height of COVID. I hadn't really done a lot of online stuff yet. And he just welcomed me with open arms as then did the rest of the New Yo people uh, at the more that I got to hang out there, the more it became like home for me. And so um, I'm so glad to give him a home here at Red or Green Book. So I'll read, uh, he, I'll read his bio real quick. Nicholas Paleologos is a poet, host, cosplayer, and former college radio host who lives in New Jersey. He is a graduate of Bloomfield College in broadcast journalism. He has worked on and contributed to three anthologies, including uh, Quarantine, I Can't Breathe, and Love Letters to Gaia. Nick's main influence for his poetry comes from the music side. He treats his performances as shows for all to enjoy. You can follow him pretty much anywhere on The Real Nick P. Welcome up, Nick Paleo Logo! Woo! I love that introduction. <laughs> that was great. Hi, everyone. You probably see my face before host, maybe like a show or something like that on Red or Green Books or like somewhere in the Zoomverse and everything. But now you get to know me. This is the, I, my name is Nick Logos. I have started writing poetry in, it was weird because I, I wrote a little bit when I was in grade school and then I stopped and then I got back into it in college and then I stopped again and then now I'm back and <laughs> sometime it's going to be permanent. And like, I'm going to keep writing. It's like, you can't take these breaks anymore, man. <laughs> And um, yeah, so the title of my book is called um, Ad Versus Reaction. So it's not adverse reaction, it's ad versus reaction. So what um, it basically entails is that it could be anything in the book. It could be anything thrown your way, whether it be like something political, whether it be something, you know, relating to body issues, self-harm, you know, anxiety, whatever the case may be. It's literally a reaction. And powerful stuff. So I don't want to take up too much more of y'all of everyone's time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read one poem. This one is probably one of my favorite poems I've ever written. And this one deserves wholeheartedly to be in the book. And of course, you know, I just saw Gengar in the chat. So I was like, I got to read this one. This one's called Gengar Gantuan Comparison. It was like this. Out of the original 151, if I were a Pokemon, I would be Gengar. Gengar is only four foot nine. I'm a little taller than Gengar. Gen in Gengar's Pokedex entry, it states that it gets 10 degrees colder when someone enters Gengar's territory. I have that same effect. It is a ghost and poison type. Ghost, like merging with anyone's shadows, especially a fairies. Poison as an addicting to my personality and poison as a corruptive, corrosive. Gengar's ability is cursed body. Cursed and hexed is this body. Trying to rip off shadowy skin to have a better connection with the soul. In order to get a Gengar, you get a ghastly. At level 25, ghastly evolves into Haunter. Haunter needs to be traded to evolve into Gengar. Letting go of what I was was the best thing to happen to me. As the games progressed, the link cable wasn't required anymore. I was cursing myself into a nightshade. I felt dark pulses against my forearms, shuddering from mean looks. I let me tie some back. Nature for me, it's payback for those looks. When poetry is fed to me, 
I'm eating the dreams, filling my soul to the brim. When I get back to life, I can deal with the hits. Each sucker punch I took, drop my HP to zero, fainting at the sight of defeat. I lick my wounds after each battle, drowning in a sludge wave in spite of the help I'm asking for. I get shadow punched only to claw back from those very shadows. I have been so used to singing parish songs about me that I disassociated with how to heal. I vow that I will bond my destiny to healing the wounds, take the shadows that control me, ball it up, project this ghostly apparition forward to deliver the final blow in my battles so I can be amongst the elite for many years to come. Legacy is coming. I can feel it emanating. This ghost is coming to life. Peace, y'all. Oh, Nick Paleo Logos. Oh my gosh, please tell people where they can follow you. Get on board of oh. Spain. Let's go. Bravo, bravo. You go, Nick, yay. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Y'all can follow me at the real Nick P on IG. That's all I have so far. So it's T H E R E A L N I C K P on IG. That's what I have so far. And uh, you can also catch my show with the word is right. Next one is not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. So if y'all want more details, go to the word is right. Here. Awesome. Awesome. Let's unmute our mics. Give Nick a big round of applause. Woo! Woo! Hey, Nick. <laughs> oh, 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 I freaking love Miro, man. She's like, my, she just cracks me up. Um, I love it. It's like this this launch has some of the most talented, sparkly poets in it. Uh, I think I'm going to say that like every launch, but um, honestly, the 10 winter poets are troubadours in paving the way for all of the poets who are going to be coming in the coming years. So thank you all so much for being here. All right. If you're watching live on Facebook, there's four people watching live. The Zoom link, thank you, Miro, is in the uh, chat at the, and the Zoom link is um, in the live feed. So feel free to click it and come on in. I will let you in if you're wanting to, um, to get in on the conversation and, and some of the action here in the Zoom room. We would love to have you. All right, up next is the beautiful Emily Cortez. Uh, this woman is, is fascinating and phenomenal. I mean, they're all, you're all phenomenal, right? I'm gonna run out of words uh, to describe everyone. And I'm so honored and blessed to be publishing her debut collection. Uh, Emily Cortez is, an, is a New York City-based actress specializing in devising a physically rooted ensemble theater. On stage, on camera, and in life, she creates work which moves, transcends, captivates, provokes, and connects. She believes everyone has a role in this great drama of existence and wants to tell as many of those tales as possible. Go check out her work and drop her a line. Please welcome up Miss Emily Cordes. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Thank Emily. you so much. I know. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that for that intro, Marissa. Um, yeah, as, as she mentioned, my, my background is in theater, but um, in addition to that, I also uh, do uh, arts management work and I, uh, I've been writing poetry for uh, a lot of my life and I uh, used to work for the New Eurekan Poets Cafe. That's how I sort of got involved with all of this. Um, when I was working there um, before the pandemic, a lot of times uh, when just when the workday would end, I would just sort of peace out after after uh, working in the office. I wouldn't really stay around for the events. But when we moved everything online for the pandemic, I was running Zoom to tech for the open mics and for the online open mics. And it just opened me up so much to this community, to the warmth and talent and just general awesomeness thereof. And it inspired me to get back into writing poetry again after a very long hiatus. Uh, so my, my book is called Armful of Poppies. Uh, a lot of these poems were written uh, during the pandemic. So it's in that similar theme of how uh, both poison and medicine can grow from the same sources and how we can create life from, uh, from very damaged uh, places. So a lot of it is just about that kind of regeneration. So I'm going to be reading two poems from it. Uh, this first one is called Globetrotter. I write this on fumes on my last drop of juice 
burning through paper despite deforestation, but I'm like the earth and my top half is blazing. Caps are inflamed from too much information, so I put it on caps, take my foot off the brakes because the oil we're burning creates a gas chamber. Boughs break from the weight of the fruit left untasted and we're running on empty in glory and anger. And they say it can wait, take the bench, rehydrate, but the same ones deal hate when we self-medicate. Just a hit or a sip to get through this last leg, but they'll throw it right back, spit it out in your face, leave your drained body curbside kicked out of the race. And they'll say you're to blame because you can't keep the pace. We're through playing Atlas, take the world off our backs, but won't be Ayn Rand assholes who shrug off and pass it. We'll toss it aloft, spin it straight to the basket, whistling sweet Georgia Brown with our teammates, team teeth flashing. Cause the last mile gets lonely when trotting the globe, but our fans in the stands cheer us on as we go. Haters jeer from the sidelines, but globe trotters know at the end of it all, we walk each other home. And this uh, next one is uh, the title poem called uh, Armful of Poppies. I wrote this after, uh, after getting my, uh, my second vaccination. Let me just scroll up real quickly and find it. I'm going through this whole, uh, I'm going through this whole uh, chapbook draft here. Okay, armful of poppies. I roll up my sleeve as the needle approaches. Old t-shirt from Giverny, Monet's poppies blaze open, adorned in remembrance of a world rendered comatose, fairy tale beauties by evil force frozen yet piercingly lucid as thorned vines grew over us. Awakened by pinprick, can spells be thus broken? Now my shoulder blooms red, tiny blossom unfolding, a miniature miracle caught in stop motion, small as a poppy seed, powerfully potent, birthing dreams of a better world steeped in devotion or a return to ignorance, rush for the comfort zone. Will we trade hard-won clarity for dull myopia? But each century's plague bears its own ring of roses and scar tissue stronger than flesh that's unbroken. As the earth in her wisdom yields our cures and our opiates, may our poppy-filled arms carry emblems of hope. Thank you. Y'all, Emily Cordes, where Woo! can people find you, Emily, online? Thank you. Um, you can find me on Instagram at uh, Postmodern Psyche, all one word. I will drop that in the chat. Uh, Facebook, Emily Cordes, and uh, also um, my, my website. I will drop all that info there. Uh, thank you all so much. It's really beautiful to get to explore this, uh, this side of myself and have people on board for it. Yes, I typed in the chat. You're going to have to add author now to your list of accolades. Y'all unmute your mics, please, and cheer on Emily Cortez, please. Woo! Woo! Emily! Yeah, Emily! Amazing. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's just going to keep coming today. Uh, you're not here because we're messing around. We're serious about this publishing thing. Uh, these poets are, are gangster, man. They are all in, and uh, it's phenomenal. Uh, this release, the quality of poets. And speaking of quality of poets, Miro is incredible. Uh, I've had an opportunity to get to know her and her work. And I'm just like, you have to be part of this. Please, please come be part of this. So I'll read her bio real quick. Miro is a 29 year old poet living in Staten Island, New York City with a background in theater, gender studies and environmental sustainability. She has been published three times and is the lead editor of the Love Letters to Gaia Anthology, which has sold nearly 200 copies since its release in April, 2021. Miro is inspired by nature and the plot twists of life. Please welcome up to the mic, Miro! Oh, well, gosh, Marissa, thank you for that marvelous <laughs> introduction. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it's like, it still hasn't really like sunk in that I'm a part of this and that this is happening. Um, you know, like the imposter syndrome is real, but as, as, as you so beautifully told me yesterday um, 
on our little one-on-one, -on -one, Marissa, um, I am enough. So people are just gonna have to fucking deal. Um, <laughs> Um, so my, my collection is called uh, Ebb and Flow. Um, I've only been writing poetry since last June. Um, I've been writing on and off for years. It all started in fifth grade with a literal Garfield knockoff called Janie and Sheila. Um, I was like literally copying the comics and just changing the names. But it, my, my, my heart was in the right place. <laughs> Um, so ebb and flow, um, I, I left New York in 2016 um, after four years of trying to be here because uh, I just, I couldn't take it anymore. So, so I left, I went to Scotland, got a master's degree, um, came back to the US just in time for the pandemic and spent last year in West Virginia. And then a couple of friends of mine sort of strong armed me into coming back to the city so I left, I came back, um, I live on Staten Island, I take, the, I take the ferry to the city and back, you know, I'm in the subway, I come and go. So like ebb and flow just sort of made sense to me. Um, and I'll, I'll read a couple, maybe, maybe three short little poems. Um, the collection, everything was written this year since my return to New York and it explores the city I said I would never come back to being alone and dating. Um, so the first one, the first piece I'll read is called This One Time at the Met. And the Met is one of my favorite places to be. One is never alone long in the city, though it happened to me, a full 10 seconds alone in a gallery that doesn't see too many. I turned to realize the room was empty save for the rugs on the wall, the swords in their display cases, I exhaled into the stillness until the next person made an appearance. And this next piece, let me find it. It is untitled um, and I wrote it one night. Hold on, I, I think I'm unplugged. Yes, I am unplugged. Technical difficulties, please hold. Okay, I'm back. Um, I wrote it one night when I, was, when I was home alone and had a couple glasses of red wine and uh, I actually wrote two pieces that night, but I'm just gonna give you the short one first and you'll have to, you'll have to get the book to see the second one. Um, so this is untitled. That thing when you go to bed at a reasonable hour to read and turn out the light by 1030, but end up rolling around your duvet, listening to indie pop and rubbing your freshly shaved legs together, thinking about the dirty texts you could send, but don't. And lastly, a little tribute uh, to where I live, it's called the ferry. The horn blasts, interrupting the silence of home gone to bed, but in my dreams, I'll know the ferry's docked ready to take what's left of night back to the city. Thank you so much. Wow, Miro! Woo! Yes! Where Woo! can people find you on social media, my dear? Um, I am Miro Reads Books on IG if you're so inclined. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, so awesome. Thank you. Can we unmute, please? And uh, let, let Mira know how much we appreciate her. Yes, queen. All right. Um, so the dude that was just here, I put him in the, um, the waiting room. I'm going to type his name in. Uh, if you know this individual, then I'll let him back in. If you don't know him, then I will, uh, I will, do you he's know him? Friend. He's my he's friend. friend. Okay. <laughs> I want to make sure because he came yeah. on the screen like all crazy, which is <laughs> fine, but like, you know, uh, yeah. so, all right, I'll let him back in and that's fine. He could be crazy for you, Miro. I just want to yes. make sure before I allowed him <laughs> to continue to be here. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah I don't mess around with zoom with zooms man uh, I totally understandable no like we've we've been in each other's lives for seven years and cool. I, I love him so 
then we love yeah. him. <laughs> Sorry, I thought <laughs> but he's it was welcome to, to be crazy as long as it doesn't seem crazy. All right. I thought it was uh, speaking of crazy poets, <laughs> this next poet is Generalissimo Brian Franco. Uh, absolutely love Generalissimo. He's my twin. We we tease that about each other because we have the same birthdays. Uh, he also has an open mic at, at Word is Right, uh, like Nick does. So I'll redo quickly his, uh, his, his bio. Generalissimo Brian Franco is a poet spoken word performer from Bun Brunswick, Maine, who has been writing since the 1990s. He was a member of the Portland, Maine Rhythmic Cypher Slam team that competed in the 2014 National Poetry Slam in Oakland, California. And he is also a painter, sculptor, gardener, gardener, and culinary genius. He is featured across the U.S. and in Scotland and has been published domestically and in Ireland and Australia. Please welcome up to the mic, Generalissimo Brian Franco! Woo! Brian. Hello. Hello, everyone. Let me see what I had for you. And, and just... Uh, Marissa, if you just sort of tell me when, when you want me to stop, that'll be great. So the first uh, is called, they call me Hurricane Brian. Oh, oh, I, I'll do my little spiel. Okay, so my book is going to be called Everything I Think is All in My Mind. It deals with, it's, it's, it's subtitled um, Poems Concerning the Human Mind, and it deals with, um, of course, um, my fight with anxiety and depression, uh, mental health issues, and just things that, the issues of, of living and thinking and, and uh, dealing with life. So um, the first is called, they call me hurricane brain. All my nerves are last nerves. Finality exists as faulty serotonin snipers missing targets, trying to hit bullseyes. They attempt to cross the bridge, but the bridge was cut open by a Category 5 hurricane now sitting broken in Mobile Bay with a one-eighth mile gap, concrete, asphalt, and rebar at the bottom of the bay where crabs used to crawl. The engineers must decide whether it is feasible to repair rather than replace, but according to the science of bridge architecture, once a bridge breaks, no band-aids or plaster casts can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Hills are but a tool in an intricate toolbox serving as band-aids for broken bridges where serotonin tries to connect us to happiness but can't always curtail the most common disease in the world which consists of last nerves with finality. The next poem is called Distression. I feel distressed or is it stressed? Maybe I'm distressed because I'm stressed and possibly depressed, but I've been so depressed so much, sometimes I'm oblivious to the fact that I'm depressed, which is quite distressing and quite stressing and inevitably depressing, which I can only qualify as stressful and distressful and a little too full of anything I want anyways. The next one is the patron bank of damaged goods and excessive baggage, or if I were a saint, what color wax would I be? During the first great nervous breakdown, I purchased several prayer candles from a Jamaican run store in Queens. The tiny storefront consisted of shelf after shelf of highball glasses with intricate drawings of saints filled with just about every color of wax. It was like walking into a rainbow. A Rasta woman explained how each candle might help me. A dozen patron saints filled my apart tiny apartment with the aroma of paraffin and seduced me asleep with fumes of futility. Should I wake and knock one over, I would burn down the existence of another tenement. After the wax was gone, I had acquired one funky set of glassware. The cover man cometh. I am a champion cyclist, not bicycles emotions. I do it all, ups, downs, inside outs, rounds and rounds, hills, valleys, twists, turns, loop-de-loops, and half pipes. I actually bore a hole through a solid granite mountain to create a shortcut I used only once. Yes, I am a champion cyclist. My face has been on the cover of Psychology Today thrice, with the three times I have won the Tour de France by simply riding out anxieties. And this is called The Secret to Surviving Sinkholes. It seemed to happen so organically. 
I decide to stay in bed more than five minutes, then 10 minutes, then an hour, and so on and so forth. Tears happened for no discernible reason, out of the blue, without warning, without trigger. Without help, I would have stayed in bed. The sudden sadness didn't just happen, it manifested. It was waiting in the wings to throw me the worst kind of surprise party. No people, no presents, no cake, but plenty of candles to burn down my life, my self-esteem, my sense of worth. Without help, I would have accepted the storyline the bed told me that it was the safest place for my existence. But a bed that talks is the voice of depression. Depression can seem like a cul-de-sac sinkhole that sucks in a car parked on the street, consumes a fire hydrant, takes a bite of sidewalk, then attacks a front yard, working its way up a walkway to the front door. It politely rings the doorbell before swallowing the door. A family of four and two dogs have to escape through the backyard, abandon everything they own, even cars, because the sinkhole expanded westward, engulfing the driveway. The inestimable speed of a sinkhole acts like depression when the word chemical is bandied about by a doctor. But no words used by doctors are bad words. Some words are just crutches, something temporary till the person who listens to their bed instead of their head starts recognizing the existence of their heart, their skin, their soul. Their peripheral vision is hampered by a hoodie the bed gave them as a gift at the surprise party that surprisingly never ended. But now the owner of the bed has asked for help. I have learned I can go surprise at the bed, get up, walk away. Um, and then this is called why it's impossible to hang an excuse from a wave. A woman whose tenacity reminds me of Dame Elizabeth Taylor once said, I'm not where I want to be, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be. In discussing her various addictions, obsessions, and temptations, she refers to herself as an urge surfer. The tenets of urge surfing. One, urge surfers don't need surfboards. Two, an urge is a chip that grows too large for its shoulder host. Three, all urges require their host to walk on high wires made of barbed wire. Four, urges are profoundly verbal. Feel free to use me to ride the waves of the ocean that is your life. Five, urges are needy beggars. Don't throw me away, keep me, you need me. Six, urges are misguided philosophers. If you say no to me, you are only expressing negativity how to respond to an urge. One, no thank you. Two, I was built to balance on my own two feet. Three, waves exist in oceans. My life exists on dry land. Four, I feel, feel free to surf the sea without me. Of course, I have no doubt that without me, you will sink. Five, goodbye, good luck, and thank you very much. Afterthought, always be courteous and cordial to urges. Urges never die, they just slither away into the woodwork of your soul, only to resurface at the most inopportune times. Um, do I still have time for a couple more, uh, Marissa? Do you have like a minute and a half if you have a couple haiku? Uh, well, I'll just do the, the world's greatest invention. My attention span is somewhat defective. My shrink says I don't look people in the eyes when I talk. Also, I purposely pretend to not listen when I listen, so when I say something, others won't be listening to what I say. It's as if that over overly cushy pleather couch is a human-sized external disk drive wirelessly wired to his note-taking laptop so he can run a mental virus scan on me. The patent for that invention must be worth millions of dollars, maybe even billions. This is why I drive an hour and a half each way for a 15-minute appointment every other week. Thank you, everyone. Yes, Chatterlissimo! Where can people find you on social media, my friend? Okay, where can people find me? Bear with me one second. I'm gonna just plop it all in the, into the uh, chat because I also have, tomorrow I'm featuring at the San Jose Poetry Slam and then Monday is Cafe Generalissimo, sponsored by, I, the word is right, so I'm just gonna, find that piece in here and copy it all for you because it's 
a little too hard for me to awesome. figure it out. Yeah, the way. San Jose Poetry Slam, Scorpiana uh, hosts that. It's an incredible online poetry slam. If anyone has not been to it, go to it. You're going to hear more Generalismo. And he cut out at the end, but he is going to have Cafe Generalismo Monday, uh, Monday 3.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and that will be an open mic before New the Nurekin Post Cafe on Monday. Um, you guys unmute your mics, please. Give it up for Generalismo, Brian Franco. Yes. Hey, General. Oh yeah, and also I, did, I, know right. I, put, I don't think I put the uh, Zoom information for the San Jose Poetry Sign, but they do have a Facebook page. Yes, and if everyone. you're not sure, you can message any one of us or message uh, uh, Red or Green Books or Word is Right, and we'll get you that link because uh, we're all planning to go, <laughs> at least I am. <laughs> all right, so um, we would have a break now and, and introduce Shane Maynard, our cover artist, uh, but she got bumped out because she is in and out of, um, I guess the mountains are camping or they're having signals. So I'm going to read her bio real quick. Uh, she is the founder of Gorilla Poets. Gorilla is spelled G-U-E-R-I-L-L-A, -L -L -A, Gorilla Poets. Again, all of the poet's information, including the artist's information is on our website, redorgreenbooks.com. Red is R-E-A-D, redorgreenbooks.com. You can read uh, up on everyone. Their social medias and cash handles are also included in their, in their short bios and their uh, books and covers will be coming soon. So um, to, to give you a night, well, here, we'll do this. Shane, Shane Maynard is a creative coach, visual artist, TEDx keynote speaker, trauma-informed care instructor, poetry mentor, and national spoken word based, uh, poet based in the Charlotte metro region of North Carolina. She is the founder of Gorilla Poets, a nonprofit art collective with branches in the US and UK. She is currently the spoken word and arts teaching instructor for the Harvey B. Uh, Gantt Center, Henderson High School, and Playing for Others, as well as Center for Faith in the Arts, current artist in residence. In 2011, she was the youngest poet to ever be inducted into the Poetry Council of North Carolina and served on board of CCAG Arts Collective or of Cornelius, North Carolina in 2017. She has been recognized as a national poet performing with respect the Mike Slam team from 2017 to 2020. In 2015, she released her first poetry album, Bootstraps, and her first chapbook, Fallen Heroes of the Awful Waffle, and was published through Main Street Rag in 2017. She recently released her second album, Carrier Pigeons, and poetry book, Divine Disturbances, in 2019. She also has a new book out this year in 2021, Road Hunger. Uh, this is the mission statement for Guerrilla Poets, for those who may not be familiar with them. We are a 501c3 nonprofit made up of spoken word artists, visual artists, and other art forms who provide art, music, and poetry slash writing programs in shelters, centers, schools, and more. From elementary kids to elderly adults, we are based in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, but serve all over the US. We also have a partner branch in the UK. Our mission is to provide access to high quality art programs tailored to specific needs for personal growth. Our vision for every person to have access to the healing power of the arts. So if that is not a laundry list of credibility uh, and accolades for this lovely woman, she also is an incredible human being. <laughs> Personally, she's incredible. Uh, not only is she um, a poet, right, but she's an artist. And so again, uh, just to show you again, the cover art that we did for the original 10, she'll be doing um, the majority of the winter release covers as well. This is Ma Dukes' Epiphanies of the Soul. Ma Dukes is here. This is Belly of the Snake by Denise Science. This is My Abyss by Pocon Ross Faya, who's in the house as well. We got uh, uh, Sing Home Back to Me by Elaine Hill. We have Calamity by Elemental. No Tea, it's a, the number two. Uh, inspired by Actual Events, this is by Kimberly Shaw. We have Conversations with Grief, which is my collection. We have Swallow My Sparrow. This is a collection of poetry written by Sarah Bella Mental. We have Before the Streetlights Come On. The artwork for this book was done by Cindy Lennon, which is Fresh Lennon's wife. 
And then of course we have Guanaco Binge, which is Matthew Modakin's book. And all of the cover art for nine out of 10 of those books are completed by Shane Maynard. So those are some, give you an idea of who's gonna be behind this project at Red or Green Books and um, the majority of the artwork for the launch. Okay, moving on. We're going to go back to the poets. I've got Gigi, Tori, uh, Wordsmith, Philly, Pam, and Roz. Uh, so we're going to just keep rocking and rolling. Gigi! Oh my God, this beautiful woman's in the house. I love her. In fact, I was thinking about you today because my oldest daughter has hair like me. It's very thick and dense and curly. And she's kind of going through that tweeny thing, like the puberty thing, you know, it's like greasy. And so I went and got her some like really cool argon oil hair products. And I was like, I don't know how to use these. I'm going to, I'm going to hit up Gigi. She'll tell me what to do. Uh, she'll, she knows like the tips and tricks and, and I'm sure you can help me. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. Gigi is born and raised in Massachusetts. Gigi started writing poetry in 2020 as a New Year's resolution to try art that made her feel uncomfortable and challenge herself. Poetry has brought her comfort during quarantine and the passing of her father. She writes about love, finding herself, and her journey through grief. She hopes that her poetry connects with others and helps them feel less alone as they journey through grief. Please welcome up to the mic, Gigi! Woo! Hi, Gigi. Hello. Hello. Um, I guess I should introduce myself. So my name is Melinda Jody Marie Arcadia. That's uh, Gigi comes from Jody. Uh, and yeah, it's been a wild year. I guess I can't really introduce my book without introducing who it's about. So that's my dad. Uh, my book is titled Morning Flowers. It's M-O-U-R-N, uh, Morning Flowers. And he, uh, yeah, he got a diagnosed last year with a geoblastoma and I was his main caregiver. So, um, sorry, super, uh, whew. I'm so honored to have a book coming out. Holy moly. I, <laughs> uh, I don't, it's still not real to me. Um, I'm a hairdresser from Massachusetts. I just finished my degree in health education, like five days ago. Um, I was doing my degree full time all throughout quarantine and stuff. Um, and then I'll be moving to New York come the spring, which I realize I haven't really announced yet, but like, here we go. I'm seeing Mira losing her mind and I love it. Um, so my book has, um, six main chapters. They're titled self body, love, cancer, grief, and now, and it's just kind of been a little bit about me and my life throughout, um, navigating through grief and what it's like to be, um, the main caregiver when someone dies. Um, I have, I think I have like three, maybe four, they're really short poems, um, that I'll read and they're all from there. I think they're from different chapters. So, but they're kind of like a slow vibe. Um, and I'm just so honored to be with all of you. Uh, so this first one is from the chapter titled Love, and it's called Seattle Lover. I left you, <clears throat> I left a part of my heart in a city I had never been. We dreamed of leaving for Seattle. Maybe it was the timing that never lied up, uh, never lined up, or maybe the other woman who laid in your bed. I've burned the idea of houses with white picket fences on the coast of the opposite side of the country. A part of me will love you in Seattle in a different reality. I wonder if we ever built the house. I wonder if we ever would have gotten sick of the rain there. Uh, and then this one is called 2 a.m. and unlocked doors. There are nights that I stay out late testing the limits, the limits of an empty house and a phone that won't ring. Every night in my youth, I'd get a call from you to see if the door should be left unlocked and the lights still on. And now I linger on the route home. 2 a.m. brings silence. Sometimes when I come home, I sit in the driveway and wait for a phone call, 
about the unlocked doors and the lights that hasn't been turned on. And then um, this one is uh, called Her. And this one is about um, the person who actually introduced me to the New York and Poets Cafe. Her. The day you die felt like it spanned over a month. Sunday morning sermons echoed through a house too weary to worship. I only hope you heard it. While you were slowly slipping away, the afternoon crept in and your breathing had slower. The air was thick in the August weather, the humming of an old air conditioner, and you were just as you were in your hospital bed. It had been four days since I left your side. The priest had made it back for one last blessing. You slipped away mid-afternoon. As the sky opened up and it poured while the sun shone through the clouds, I got you ready for the mortician. You were always a clean shaven man. I had made sure you were ready for company. They make sure the family is away when the mortician comes and so I called her. An entanglement who left me breathless in a room where no breathing took place. I knew she'd never be mine, but in that moment when she came to my house and drove around with our hands entwined, I felt we had loved and lived our entire lives in that car ride. Our love was only meant for a season, but on the day you died, she was there the day that felt like spanded for months. The smell of her perfume still lingers in that memory. And then I have one more and then I'll let you all go. Um, so this one is called, I wonder her name. I rifle through old photographs and I find pictures of her. A girl I barely recognize, her eyes, they shimmer like mine, but hers don't look so heavy. Her gaze full of hope, this was before. She discovered the gravity of morality. I wonder what her name is. It feels familiar on my tongue. I wonder how her father is. She looks so young. I wonder if I told her, would she grasp every moment or would it break her heart early? I wonder what her name is and does she spell it like mine? Thank you so much for giving me the space. <laughs> like what well, I'm mute. I'm like pressing the button and then it's remuting. Yes. Oh my gosh. Can you please tell people where they can find you and follow you. So on IG, you can follow me at iron underscore resilience. And I do have a poetry website that I'll be updating soon. Yes. Now that I can actually officially say that I have a book coming out. And that's arcadian-poetry.com. It's so exciting, y'all. I'm used your mics. Please give it up for Gigi. Woo! Man. Hey, Gigi. Hey, Gigi. Hey, Gigi. Man. Oh my goodness, I love how Miro claps. Like I kind of want to do that now. I want to like make that a Miro clap. <laughs> yes, I love it. Um, it's awesome. Okay, so moving on is the next poet. I absolutely adore this poet, and I'm so excited that she is here publishing with her friends. Um, I think it's a lot easier when you do something scary, like publish a book when you're doing it with people you love and you care about. So we're very honored to be um, publishing her debut collection. And the next poet up is, is Tori Lutz. Let me read Tori's bio for you. Tori is a poet from Miami, Florida. She has received degrees in English from Florida State University in 2018 and Columbia University in 2021, which I believe is a master's degree in English, but it wouldn't fit in her bio. So I'm just going to give her that credit because that's freaking amazing. She currently lives in New York City pursuing journalism and poetry. Her love of writing began with the love of reading the Harry Potter series at the age of six. Well, we won't date, we won't give her an age date, y'all. She just read the Harry Potter's Potter series. Okay. <laughs> Since then, she has explored songwriting, short and long fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and academic writing. Now she can add publishing to those lists of accolades, as can the rest of you. Please welcome up to the mic, Tori Lutz. Woo! Thank you for that. That was a wonderful introduction. Um, okay, so uh, like I said in the bio, I have loved writing pretty much since I loved reading and I've always loved reading. So I don't remember a time in my life where words were not important to me. Um, and this book is called Schoolyard Crushes and Prozac Prescriptions. 
and the concept of it takes um, both the it like the innocence of first crushes, first loves, um, like first losses, even all that, and also a journey like journeys through mental health and and struggles and how they kind of while there there's a juxtaposition there, there's also um, a lot of things that they play into each other with. So that's the concept of it. I'm gonna read um, two poems, and one is more about like the mental health kind of side of the book. Um, and then the other one is more of the crushes kind of side of the book. So I'm just gonna cover my bases. Okay, this one is called Suffocating. Breathe in, breathe out. On a scale of one to 10, how are you feeling today? One meaning one foot in the grave and the other barely grabbing the edge. 10 meaning tenacious, vivacious, and every other acious that can describe how elated you are. Maybe you're feeling a five if you're just doing fine. There is no right answer, of course, unless you consider anything below a four the right answer for because we care for you and can't let anything bad happen so let's lock that shit down before it becomes a problem because we can't have you i mean you i mean your brain shutting down on us now but answer honestly on a scale of one to ten how are you feeling today no pressure, but you aren't the only one with problems and we need to know how serious this is before we can move on, move on. Can you say at least a six? What, sick of this? No, at least a six. I'll just jot down seven if it's all the same to you then. You look chipper enough today, keep that head up. We all know what happened when you last reached a two, two as in too fucking bad, you've got shit to do. I think we should aim for an eight by tomorrow. If you ate before tomorrow, we could even put a nine, but, I'm not sure you're there yet, and it's asinine to shoot too high, so how about that seven again? What? Three. That won't do you, see. That has to be documented, prioritized, considered a problem. Other people have real problems. Can you see? We don't have time for a crisis. If you're going to fuck up, at least do it right. Breathe in, breathe out. And then this one is called Call It What You Want. To believe in a soulmate is an arrogant thing. It is to believe that you are as perfect for someone as it can get, as perfect for them as you know they are for you. Can you instead sit with me then at the top of the double slide, I can tell you secrets that I pinky promise I've never told anyone else before that, that I don't wanna go home, that I like you, that I want you, that I love you, that I need you. That however I gravitate toward or away from you is instinct that can't be explained by the words and languages I have spent the better half of my life mastering, loving. Maybe that's why you were always the first person I'd look for in hide and seek. Maybe that's why we seem to spend the intersections of our lives still playing even after everyone else has gone home. That's it. Yes, Tori, let's go. Tori, where can people find you, my dear? Um, I'm mostly on Instagram, uh, Tori Lutz Poetry, so just T-O-R-I-L-U-T-Z Poetry. That's, that's amazing. Y'all, yeah. unmute your mics, please give it up for Tori <laughs> Lutz. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is only the first of many of these that we will be doing to uh, spotlight our winter uh, 10 poets. We're so honored and blessed that they are here and we're releasing them. Speaking of the next poet, oh my God, I'm so excited for Wordsmith Philly. Uh, uh, Philip Boykin is amazing. Like y'all don't even know. I saw this poet a while ago in the pandemic and then he was uh, he was brought to my attention by actually by poet Khan. I hope it's okay to call you out Khan on this. Uh, who said, Marissa, you should look at this poet. He has never published a book. And I was like, no. He had to have published something, right? I mean, this is amazing. And so when I when I got um, in touch with Wordsmith Philly, and it was true, he had not published a book. I was like, oh my god, please come and like let's publish your book. He's an incredible artist. So let me read his bio real quick. Philip Hayes Boykin, uh, also known as Wordsmith Philly, was born in Seaside, California, and introduced to poetry in the seventh grade in seventh grade English. He went to open mics and church events in high school as a way to cope with the death of his grandmother. He got back to what helped him out the most, which was poetry. He gathered more knowledge of, 
other arts like acting, dancing, and martial arts, and using the expertise he gained to fuel his writing, his storytelling and rhyme scheme, his rhyme scheme. Uh, poetry is a fan favorite in the poetry community. Please welcome up to the mic, Wordsmith Philip. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, hello. <laughs> going on how y'all doing how y'all doing oh man i'm like right. fangirling my friend i'm like oh, yes, yes he's yes. gonna rip it i'm so excited all right so uh the book that i'm writing is basically called the voices of the fallen and it's basically all the voices and perspectives and narrations of all the slaves that were in the slave trade that passed away so uh I figured I'd read this poem from it. It's called uh, Distant Slave Trade. Um, yeah, so just uh, feel free to listen and I'll drop some knowledge for you. All right, here we go. I met her when I was a child. It was, it was attraction at its best, yet. She blessed my world with her smile and then she grew into a beautiful nymphette. Seeing her every day gave my sad world hope like a pleasant vignette. Being in love while being in bondage is something that we wouldn't expect. But we were slaves birthed by pain to be cattle like plantations, like the plantation's futurette. So having her as my heart will prove to be my biggest regret. Our painful experience of being laborers of the slave trade kept us apart, but our hearts bonded, making it a skill that we made. She was distant, but this distance made us stronger than we prayed. I wanted her near me even though it was a grave mistake, but we kept our love on hush mode for safety and fate's sake. But I was willing to take that risk because she was my needed gift, like a heat stroke victim yearning nightshade. I ran away from my plantation to see my love, sprinting through the woods and climbing the trees above, fueled by the fire of the desire to be with my lady which made me gather up my wits and not be lazy as I journeyed through hell to get to the one that was my missing piece. The feeling of love buried all the pain that I felt crossing through those thorny creeks. The cherishable bliss of her kiss lulled my rapid heartbeats and my adore for my love made me ignore all the pain that my body would speak. The more I ran, the more my body would hurt. The more I thought of her, the more the pain would lessen worse. Running on fumes and gasping for air, I expressed exasperation. Reach, I reached my goal as I saw my love picking cotton on her plantation. I called for her name and gave up my position, forcing her master to shoot me without any of his shots missing tearing my broken body apart as I never took my eyes off my boo. As she ran to me, as shots kept firing, hitting and killing her too. Now we are together here in the kingdom of heaven. Now we are together forever, making love our selection. No longer having to run and having to have wishes of our love lasting long. For now I am forever with her, experiencing her hugs inside her wings and arms. Thank you. Oh man, wordsmith, Philly y'all. Where can people Philip. find you, my friend? Oh, Philip. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Hold on. Hold on. I was Philip. I know. I was hard. I was hard to read. <laughs> It's okay, we're here. Take your time. Oh, so, uh, yeah, you we can respect you, Philip. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Go ahead. Go Thank ahead. You. 
let's oh. let's do this. Let's do a big clap. Unmute yourselves. Let's give him a lot of love, and then he can tell us where we can find him. Oh. Philip, so powerful. Philip, Philip. Yes, Fort Smith. Fort Smith, Fort Smith. Oh man, that <sighs> you guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Watch, right. I'll even do it for you if you want. You can find him. Well, no, because I only have your cash app. I don't have your. your <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Your social okay. stamps. I'm sorry. So my my social stamps. I'm sorry. I I'm a little new at this. Okay. So my social <laughs> my social stamps are. Uh, I'm on Instagram as Wordsmith Philly eight nine eight nine, and uh, Philip Boykin on Facebook. So I basically post all my poems on Instagram onto Facebook. So. You can find me on there. Yes, and don't forget, you can always go to the website, redorgreenbooks.com, red is R-E-A-D. Uh, each of these poets has their little bio, uh, their short bio. They're going to have a long bio later, but they have their short bio with their cash handles, as well as their social media handles, any websites that they have. So you can find all of this information also in one place if you're not sure. You know, you might be driving in a car like Shane Maynard is right now. And speaking of incredible people, Shane Maynard is in the house. Uh, I read Shane's bio and showed you some of her beautiful cover art. Uh, did you want to give a shout out, Shane? Or are you driving? I, th I think she's, she's driving. <laughs> focus on the Super excited to be here. And I'm so <laughs> proud of all the clips. I'm just happy that I got to finally like get in. I make Daniel leave. <laughs> yeah, she made her she made her her honey bunny, her partner Daniel, she made him leave the lake. So they can find reception. Like that's dedication, y'all. That's some dedication. Um, so yeah, we absolutely love. Thank you, Daniel. We love you too. Right? It's all about the partners who support the poets. Right? We wouldn't be uh, anywhere if we didn't have supportive partners too. So thank you, Daniel. <laughs> all right. Um, thank you so much, Wordsmith Philly man. Thank We're you. just thank so you. jacked that you're here. Thank you. I so really much. like. I wanted to say like. I never thought because usually I just wrote stuff to just write it. So it's like really an honor to just have a book, you know, being published, have people read my stuff and knowing that I'm pretty much helping people out with just, you know, pretty much hearing what I got to say. Because like for me, I was really insecure about my voice and like really shy about really getting on stage and stuff, even though I had to like, you know, normally get on there. But like, yeah, I just really appreciate this. Thank you. Um, a couple things that I notice um, doing this for a little while now <clears throat> is that every single one of us started out with an insecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of it had to do with speaking or speaking in public or writing or feeling like we, uh, what we were saying wasn't good enough. Um, it wasn't valid enough. It wasn't skilled enough. We were not good enough at, at speaking it. Um, every single one of us has gone through those insecurities. Like Miro said, the, um, the imposter syndrome is real. So if you're watching this or you're part of this today, I want you to know that you are enough. And yes, uh, absolutely, we can help you um, own your craft and hone it and, and tweak it and grow it and get stronger in your craft. But you are enough because no one can tell your story but you. And every story is important. There's not a single person who doesn't have a story and there's not a single person whose story is not important. So don't think for a second that we won't support you. Thank Speaking you. of people who are so important, I got to tell y'all, like, I'm so glad that this is a collection of poets who really maybe didn't know each other before this, right? This is a, this is seriously a collection of poets from all over the U.S. We had some U.K. poets who unfortunately couldn't make the deadlines for this launch, so I'm hoping that the next launch we're able to get some more international poets in here as well. But these are poets from all walks of life and backgrounds and ages and sexual orientations and belief systems and and we're all knowing each other. And Pam Rice is easily by far one of the most impactful poets I've ever met. So, you know, listen very carefully because she's easily uh, the, 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 the one that's gonna creep up, up 
creep up on you in a room and slap you like you're just gonna get whacked so but she's not violent okay it's not meaning like she slap you with her words y'all uh but easily she's one of the most impactful poets that i've ever heard and i'm honored to be able to launch her debut poetry collection so let me read her bio for you real quick because she's I, she's a lovely human being too pam lives in north carolina with her wife and fur babies she discovered the world of poetry in 12th grade AP English. Poetry was her way of coping with grief and survivor's guilt, manages her bipolar disorder. Topics include depression, anxiety, suicide, hopelessness, and healing. Poetry allows her to express herself in a way that she cannot verbally. It has become a beacon in a depth of darkness, and she hopes it will help others with their own mental health struggles. Please welcome up to the mic. Um, oh! <laughs> Thank you, Marissa. Wonderful introduction. Um, my book's called The Struggle Within, and it has two basic sides, one of which is pretty dark and covers a lot of the uh, suicide, um, you know, uh, mental health issues, bipolar. Um, also how I felt growing up being gay. Um, so we've got that side and then we have another that is more of a healing side and a little bit lighter poetry. Uh, I'm gonna read kind of one from each group. The first one's called Alone. Come here, little one. Be not afraid. Your eyes are playing tricks on your heart and your mind is a master of deception. Because you do not see anyone or hear anyone, you feel alone. Hear me now, listen close. You may feel lonely, but there is always someone near. For some, you wander in their thoughts. Others hold you close in their hearts or find you walking in their dreams. And for a special few, you are woven into the very fabric of their souls. So remember, what you think, see, and hear may not be real. You are not alone, you are loved. The second one is called For You. I find myself shattered, cowering, retreating into the dark, dank depths of my skull. Shards of past personas slice my hands as I try to piece them back together again. I have lost my way. I have lost myself. Each day I strive to take a step up, to take a step out, to be what you need me to be. I slip on my mask, leave myself behind, and show up for you. I listen to your fears and worries, your stories and your pain. I offer to ease your burdens. I listen. I share and I care. But when the sun goes down, there is nothing left for me, nothing left of me. All of my strength, my emotions and my presence has been given to you. I crawl back into my shell, conserve my energy, my thoughts, my very mind for the next person who calls. Thank you. Um, yes oh my god beautiful where can people find you and follow you uh, right now just on facebook pam rice and i hope to have a website up soon y'all unmute your mics please for pam beautiful pam good work <laughs> yes oh my goodness yes yes thank you so much pam and you're so brave and courageous for being on this trip with us in this journey through publishing and i, I it wouldn't be the same if you weren't here so thank you my friend for being here uh with all of us for sure uh speaking of a, the, another poet who it wouldn't be the same without her Roz diaz everybody oh my god Rosalind is amazing uh so so honored again a poet i was like no she's never published because she's just this amazing poet right and so i am like so humbled and honored that not only Roz but all of you are are putting your your debut collections in this launch because we're going to rock the socks off of the publishing world with this launch so Roz diaz um she, 
I can't even, I'll go on forever. Roz Diaz is a Puerto Rican poet from the Bronx. Her passion for writing, social justice, and healing are fuel to her poetry. Her pieces have been published in collaborative works such as I Can't Breathe, Social Justice Literary Magazine, and Love Letters to Gaia, an anthology. Rosalind's goal is to inspire, motivate, and help people heal through the art of poetry. Please, my beautiful friend, welcome up, Rosalind Diaz! Let's go, Rosalind! I love your energy always, Marissa. I'm so glad to be here, and I'm honored to be a part of this. Like, this has always been my dream to publish, and this is my first time, and I'm just so excited. Um, so with that being said, I'm gonna try to do two pieces from my collection. Um, one is called Mandated Reporter and it goes like this. Dodging taboos since I exited the womb, see? It took a while for the storm to brew within me and finally when it hit, it was too late. Anyone who meant anything to me was drowning in a sea of fuck you, what about me? No one saw it coming, but then again, most natural disasters give little to no warning. Drenched in my own mess, I make it to an office where the first thing they ask is if I ever feel like harming me. And I say that death is the only thing that is guaranteed and I had no wishes to expedite the end of my journey. I asked her if she knew who I was, told her I teach women not to give up. I said, I knew she wasn't an ophthalmologist, but I asked her to stare into my eyes to find where the promise is, told her I am everything but typical, proudly and original, and that I wouldn't make it easy to glide that red pen across the page or let her put me in a white jacket with straps and make me go away. That she didn't get to write me off that day. As how dare she try to put a label on me, said I'm no danger to myself and much less to society, said I aim to strive. Reminded her that I've loved a few men back to life after they signed emotional DNRs. Told her that I've placed my healing hands over the nastiest scars and prevailed. Then I proceeded to unveil that I was a miracle child. I've survived dynamics that no one ever thought I would. But I kept pushing like the little engine that knew she could. Though genetically, my body fights for immunity and my organs have written me countless suicide notes, I'll have you know that I'm here because of my undying hope to break cycles and to treat life as the best piece I've ever composed. Oh, Doc, it's not over yet. So the divine says, end poem. Aren't you proud to be a mandated reporter? That's my first piece. And the next one I'm going to do is called Me Versus Me. And it goes like this. Speaking is the art of forcing this tangled but witty tongue to say something coherent. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the effort is just not worth putting in. Tired of explaining to minds that minds elevating. Next time I promise to feel good about being honest. To God I'm trying to win. Promise me you won't leave without so much as a wave goodbye. But if you leave, you didn't try hard enough and I'm worth it. So screw you. How I wish they made sense most times, but my thoughts are just old puzzle pieces collecting dust in a box, waiting patiently to be a part of a bigger picture. To be appreciated and valued for the work of art that it is. In a perfect world, wherever I go, I'm being understood and complexity is more than just an aching taboo or synonym to unmarriable. If I said I didn't wanna be understood, I'd be lying. Next to you is the quietest my mind has ever been. All the brain thunder finds peace and though it still roars violently, I'm free 
to breathe. I think about letting you into my mind, unparalleled darkness and blinding shine all at the same time, but I'm scared it would ruin everything happens for a reason. If this is true, why is this happening? Me and you, vulnerability is choosing between being completely exposed in danger, but free. This thirst in me to be on both sides of the fence. I have walls, but at least they're not decorated with barbed wire. Maybe a little poison ivy, climb over if you desire. Prove it to me, leave but stay. To love feels like handing a fully loaded firearm to someone with trembling fingers. Those same fingers that are intertwined as we walk down the street together. Who says I don't trust? Heart beating fast and mind racing faster as I ask myself, if body language is a thing, how many of my secrets and fears have I shared with you without uttering a single word? When will I get it through my head that softness does not mean weakness? I want you to look at me, but not too deep. And I wish I could say I'm sorry, but I'm not. And when asked why someone hasn't made me their wife, I often reply that there's no one that catches my eye, but the truth is too many have left with pieces of me between their teeth and the taste of me is still a distant memory on their tongue that I no longer remember the taste of feeling, holy shit, I give myself a headache. No one wins this war when it's me versus me and poem. Oh, <laughs> Rosalind Diaz, yo, Ros, where can you. people find you? They can find me on Instagram on Through Her Big Brown Eyes um, and Through Her Big Brown Eyes.com, my website. And now y'all can purchase my book. We can swap, you know, hit me up. We'll see yes. what you can do. Yes. Y'all unmute you. your mics. Give Roz a huge round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Poet. Hey, Roz. Y'all, I hope that you were as blown away by the collection of poets in our winter launch here at Red or Green Books. This was uh, an incredible Meet the Poets. I hope you're excited to see what's going to come next. I am very excited uh, to see these books come to life. I'm excited to see what Shane does with the cover art. I'm excited to see uh, everything kind of come together. And then, of course, when I ship the books to them, they get to hold it in their hands for the first time, right? It's so exciting uh, to be able to do that. So please keep pouring love and belief. We got to flex the belief muscles a little bit uh, in this process. It's long, it's daunting, it's stressful, but at the end of it, I promise you will have something uh, that nobody can ever take away from you. And so we're very, very, very excited. Uh, I'm your host, Marissa Prada, the uh, publisher for Red or Green Books. Again, you can go to the website, www.redorgreenbooks.com. Red is R-E-A-D, R-E-A-D, red or greenbooks.com. You can see the bios, the cash apps, uh, links to their websites and their social media handles on the website to connect with the poets. Many of them have their pre-orders set up already uh, or will have their pre-orders set up soon. As always, you can purchase the entire bundle of all 10 of the books straight from the press. Uh, that way you don't have to, uh, you know, pay a lot on shipping, but then the poets don't have to offer a lower price for their books either. Uh, so yes, we're definitely going to do that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me anytime. Thank you so much, everyone. Did, did anyone have anything else that they wanted to pop in and say before we close today? A very big shout Oh, I was going to say, I was saying, thank you so much, Marissa. Thank you so much for the green books. Thank you so much to all the people that presented today. Thanks so much to all those that came to watch today um, and watching, whether it be here in Zoom or on Facebook or in spirit. So y'all so appreciate it. Thank you so much. Tonight, you the man, Nick. You the man. He's all right. He's, he's, he's a 
Jersey Jesus. Um, we we do have the cash slam tonight. Uh, the word is right, W R A T E. We have a cash slam and an open mic. Ten dollars to get in that cash slam. We pay the top two places. If you would like something to do tonight, I uh, may maybe you'll see these posts around. We have cafe generally. So, so we have. Speak up Sundays with Domo Beth is a music forward open mic on Sundays. We got Cafe Generalissimo this Friday, or excuse me, this Monday. And then of course, Poetry with Nick P, our very own Nick Paley logo. So we'll have his open mic Wednesday night. Those are all things on the word is right, W-R-T-E. And those are through Facebook and Zoom. So definitely please keep plugging in. I'm so proud of all of you. I'm honored uh, to be reading these books as we're getting them through. Let me know, please, if you need anything. I'm here for you. Thank you all so much. God bless. Have a wonderful afternoon. See you all next time. Bye. Peace, everyone.